Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, welcome to part two of building the TACOM Panther A mid-early production. And I know it's been a little bit of a, of a gap in between when we've had part one come out and part two. Uh, there was just so many other things going on in the store and with modeling and I literally had to just take a little bit of a break because this is a, a big, big project. Lots and lots of parts because of the interior. Uh, I've been working on it a little bit more. We've, we've got to the point, because remember we wanted to do something that was going to be like a factory setting for this particular vehicle. So we're not going to, there's going to be a lot of red oxide primer and a lot of other parts that are, won't be attached the normal way. So it'll look like it's in a factory setting being assembled. Now, this video is not going to include the factory portion of the build. That is a whole other uh, diorama thing that we have to do, but we're going to get it ready as if it's going you know, to go, go into that, uh, that type of diorama. Plus, I've also just found out that Ming is going to be making a, uh, a turret holder that it's on wheels. It's the bracing and turret holder that they would have used in a factory that they would have placed the turret in and that way they could wheel it around closer to the vehicles before they actually pop them into place. So as soon as we get one of those we'll also use that in correlation with the rest of the parts that we've already put together to build you know a nice little simple diorama. We're not going to go with a huge factory or anything like that but uh, uh, it's starting to come together really well. Uh, it's, it's fun sometimes to come back and take a little break from something when something's not aggravating you, but there's just so many parts that you want to just, you know, pull what little hair you have out already in there. But uh, we're back to it, and everything is falling right back together like it, like it should. So uh, let's get started on it. Well, right now we're in the process of assembling the parts of the engine. Now, I've, I've kind of built a bunch of little sub-assemblies right here to show you guys because it's, it's pretty straightforward what we have to assemble here and trying out all the different parts. Everything seems to fit fairly well. In fact, now we're just hooking up some of the plumbing and when I, I just glued this little hose on right here, purposely with a little extra cement to make sure that it didn't set up too much. That way we have the opportunity to keep, uh, keep it flexible so we can put it in just the right position. And with the hose in place, Tacom has made it so each one of these pegs lines up to a slot on here that only goes one particular way. So as you can see, very easy to make sure you get it in the right one because it won't fit the other way. And the same thing on this side, you can see there's one big one, one little one, so only fits the one direction on that as well. And we'll just put some glue on that part. And pop that in right there. Now there's some more plumbing and stuff that goes on front there. And finally, this top piece will fit right into place here. Oh, actually there's one, take that back, there's one little piece we need to attach right in through here. So I won't show a heck of a lot of the engine getting put together, and that's mainly because it goes together this easily. Once you get all the sub-assemblies on, there we go, that fits right in there. Once you get all the sub-assemblies on there, it actually is uh, very fast to put together. And you see that just slides like that. We got a nice little engine block going on right there. So I will continue to keep plumbing up the rest of the, uh, the engine. And just before we get done, we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I've gone ahead and mounted the bottom of the sides of the sponsons here. And of course, we saw that we painted those all up. We also have the, uh, the engine completed now other than painting, which uh, we're gonna paint in two separate pieces. So we'll be able to paint this up. And we've also gone ahead and put the mounting brackets inside the, uh, the engine compartment. So we're gonna go ahead and paint this up and get it mounted into place the way it should just slide right in which it does, real nice fit. And then we'll be able to put the, uh, the top on here. We're also gonna go ahead and paint the uh, fuel tanks here, the red oxide, I believe they are. That'll get mounted one on either side of this back pieces. 
Plus we also have the munitions racks. Uh, we're going to leave the shells out because if this is supposed to be more of a factory type setting, they wouldn't have obviously ammunition inside. So we had a little change of plans. Uh, I just told you a minute ago I was going to paint up the, uh, the fuel tanks and then I was going to start working on the radiators. And I started looking into the instructions and saw how these pieces fit in and realized I need to actually assemble all this stuff in place because there's it, it fits very, very well. It's just that you need to have it lined up perfectly to get all the, uh, the radiator parts um, to line up. So what I thought I would do here is we would do just what I was get this lined up. So we'll get all of the radiators and the fuel tanks installed like we did on this side and then we can come back, mask this off, mask the uh, the lower part down here and just spray the entire thing with the red oxide primer. Uh, like I said, I was going to paint these separately but it's not a big deal and you can see once it's in place all of these all these components just drop right in but you do need this other outer wall to make sure everything's lined up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish gluing off the rest of this. We'll mask this portion off and spray these the red oxide primer after we get them all squared up and lined up here. It's a little bit off, but you get the general idea. This side went together real, real fast and easy. This one just looks like it just might need just a little bit of adjustment before we can, we can get it on there. But I'll work on that right now. So we've got all those parts painted and the engine is glued into place now. Now I'm just going over all of these areas with some Tamiya black panel wash. And we're putting it on kind of heavy. We're gonna let it soak in for just a few minutes. And then using just a dry, dry brush, we're gonna take it off just like a dry brushing technique. And this should give us some nice shadow effects on all these pieces. And I'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. Uh, we also have I actually don't know what this part of the vehicle is, but this part right here is going to get glued in right now. And then we can start putting the rest of the plumbing in the tank. And Tacom has provided a lot of nice little tabs, so all of this stuff kind of fits fairly easy and straightforward. We have our uh, last little bit of plumbing. I do have to do some more weathering and some lines on that, but that will get glued in just like about like that. But I, I like I said, I want to do some more painting on that before we get that in. And finally, we'll be able to drop the top of the engine on after we get that other plumbing in place there. And it's real clean right now, but we'll weather that down a bit too. So, see if this is starting to... Yeah, we want to start taking off just a little bit of this now and then blot it off on a paper towel. And just keep going over it back and forth till you get it to the point that you like the way it's going to look. We want to create some shadows. We don't really want it super dirty, but we do want it to have some shadows because this is mostly going to get put inside of the other piece. Oh, also, I've gone ahead and red oxide primered the inside of here, so we can put that into place too, and not worrying about having to try to paint inside of all that once it's done. So, I am going to go back and forth and work on dry brushing this for a little while longer. Might let it set up a bit more first before we do any more of that. And just before we do any of the plumbing, we're going to come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, we've got the uh, the engine compartment weathered up, uh, the radiators and all that. We've wiped off most of the excess panel liner, just enough to give it some shadow effect. And especially, it's going to get covered over partially, but you will be able to see inside, and there would be a lot more shadows. Now, we've gone ahead and attached the the back plate of the vehicle, and I'll show you this right here. There, right here and here, there are two little tabs. You can kind of see where the other tab comes out. I had to go ahead and cut the tab off of this side because I could get it in here, but it was almost impossible to flex this without, I was worried about breaking it, to pop in that other tab. So I went and trimmed it off. Everything kind of lined up right after that. So uh, that's working out better. Just so if you might have to do the same thing. Now we've gone ahead and clear coated the, uh, the top of the engine here. And that we can now weather as well. 
And you might notice too, the engine has a little bit of play. I only glued it in the front for right now because I was always worried about when you're putting all these multiple pieces together like this, that if you glue it down solid and then you go on later on and then you're going, oh, I can't get this piece around it or I can't get another piece around it. And so we still want to get that plumbing in around. So I'm going to go ahead and finish weathering up the plumbing here. And as soon as this is uh, completely dry, we'll put a little black panel liner on this just to kind of highlight some of the shadows in there and then we'll put the rest of it on here is our mostly completed uh, weathered and painted engine now as you can see we've installed the last little bits of plumbing in the engine did a little detailing and finish up doing the dry brushing with the uh, the washes that we had on side there so we have a nice uh, shadowy uh, engine compartment not too too dirty but still shows all the detail that Tacom has installed into this kit now with that portion of it done we can and i have been actually doing this already we were dry fitting the the top of the vehicle on the top has the uh the clips in it let me zoom out a little bit right there for you guys this uh will clip right in on the front and the front clips in way easier than the back did and we just have to do a little bit of adjusting here to get it to all line up you can see we get that little portion to line up. So once we have that on there, we're not going to glue that in now, but we'll be able to go ahead and start working on all of the panels for the back now, including the big grates that uh, cover up the radiators, all the engine compartment, all those kind of little pieces on it there. Now we do have to be careful how we're going to do all this stuff because we want to leave part of as much of this is exposed. In fact, might even leave something like this out on the side like they were about to put this into place and bolt it on uh, part of the radiators maybe only one side of that on just whatever is going to make it look like it's in the middle of construction but still have the ability to see all the extra detail we we put inside there so with that in mind i am going to start building the sub assemblies that make these up and we won't glue anything down we want to figure out how it's going to look first but uh, we'll work on that right now well, we've gone ahead and put in all of the bracing and the ammo racks and all these other little pieces and little bins that call for as well as the uh, the top brace right here. And as you can see, we've gone ahead and sprayed just a base coat of the uh, the dark yellow. And, and I was looking into Panther factories and I was trying to find some color shots and could not find one body color that was painted with the red oxide primer. I mean, the insides were all painted with the red oxide, but everything was on the east, outside was either gray or the actual body color that was going to be. It did find some Panther turrets that were painted red oxide primer, but nothing for the full body. Now, we've obviously got to attach a lot of other pieces on here. And like on the back here, I'm probably going to leave it in this similar setup. And now this is not clicked into place here, but I've drilled out the holes for where the bolts would attach all that stuff. So to make that, and I've got to probably drill out the holes on the hatch, which we painted the dark yellow on the outside and the red oxide on the inside. Thought about having that on there with the hatch open, but it, it covers up so much of what we, you know, the time and effort we put into building that. And turn this sideways like this as you can see you can still see quite a bit inside if we leave this hatch open as well as with the turret off and we've got this just painted in a red oxide I have to do a little research they've got this giant uh, tube underneath here basically and I don't know if that's some kind of hydraulic thing for the uh, for the hatches or not, if that is supposed to be there, if it's in scale or what. I would imagine it would be considering that this is an interior kit, but you can see how, uh, how that's going to start to look. Now, before I attach this, I'm going to work on the wheels for a little bit because I think I am going to have this sitting on its wheels, uh, ready to go. No tracks, of course, on it, and we'll, we'll be leaving this off. We could always build tables and things like that to hold all the little parts that they're lifting on. I also have to do a little investigation, too, that if it would have the screens on the back of it at this point as well. Now, I was putting the wheels into place to uh, basically test fit them before I start painting them. And then I noticed there was one other part inside the kit, which basically is another piece of frontal armor that makes up, you know, makes it dimensional. And it kind of locks into place here. But when you do that, 
you basically get some of these areas that show through. So we can leave that hatch off and still leave that red oxide primer and it looks kind of cool because it looks like it's partially being built. So I'm going to glue that inside there. Then I think I'm at the point now that we're going to work on the wheels like I told you, but I think we can actually go ahead and glue this top part of the hull on because there's not much more I need to do inside of here. There's some little parts that I can reach in there. We're not going to put everything inside there, especially since some of it you can't even see at all in there. But uh, thought I would show you guys that. I think that looks really good having still part of the red oxide primer underneath. Okay, I'm right in the process right now of gluing up some scratch built tables that I'm uh, assembling and sit like that and I just made that out of some some strip styrene some flat styrene and some tube styrene as well as a little channel to uh, to make up some of the rigidity you can see right underneath here there's some use some channel right there to make it a nice strong table and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a couple of these little tables on around the vehicle as if it's being worked on I have uh, some tools too that I was able to find, some wrench sets and some screwdrivers and this little pack of tools right here too. This is all different types of wrenches and that'll look kind of, I think, kind of interesting to put off onto the tables after we get them all painted up. I also have that we can use and pull out some of the parts out of is this German fuel maintenance team and equipment set. So we can use like the acetylene and the oxygen, the uh, compressor, all those little things I think will be really good all around the vehicle. We can even use that work table in there as well, as well as the tool. So we'll have like a nice, nice work area that's full of stuff. Now the other piece that I'm working on right now here is it kind of got bumped, but uh, I've taken some channel and we are going down the line and we are going to build basically a platform that runs along the side of the tank at about about the level of the height of the tank with the wheels on and this will have a set of stairs in the front of it that the guys will be walking up will be able to walk up to this platform and be able to get in and out of the vehicle very very easily so it'll be a nice little little accessory and we'll put one of those on I've seen them in some of the German factories um, this one I think will be a nice thing we'll just put a sheet of thin styrene over the top once we get all that glued up we're working on that for a little bit but what I want to show you right now is the actual vehicle that um, I've gone ahead and mated the top and bottom hole together. So we've got that glued down. I did go ahead and put the photo etch in place too and paint that all up. And changed my mind again. I did put this hatch on. I noticed most of them have the hatch in place and we've just left this hatch open. Now I've gone ahead also and dull coated the entire thing. So what we can do now is I'm liking taking the uh, the panel liner and we're going to go down the line and just highlight any of these pieces in here, like the weld seams, any of the rivet holes, and even found a couple other pictures too. This area right here with the rivet, with the, excuse me, with the holes drilled out, those were actually exposed just like that. So we'll leave some of these parts off. We'll put like the periscopes on and the covers that cover them, but we'll leave some of the other parts off as if it's being built. So if you can imagine this thing going right along the side of it here with the stairs coming down the front and a platform, maybe even a, a board or two that they can walk across. Just something, something interesting like that and then we can put all the tools all over it. Well, as you can see, I've finished up the walkway with the stairs and we built just a simple little handrail to get up on top there. And I've noticed every one that we saw in the real factories did not have handrails on either side. And I guess that's so you could put it on either side of the vehicle. If there was another vehicle here, you could walk over. We also painted up our tables, got all basically together. The other thing I want to do is also maybe build some racks back here up against the wall type thing that would have like parts on it. I saw that in quite a few factories. Now you may notice that we have a big piece of styrene right here that I've just painted with like a light gray. And this is going to represent the size of the diorama we're going to build. And this is going to be like a piece of the factory floor and this is how big it's going to be. I painted it gray just to kind of represent concrete. We'll, we'll cut it up and score it and then weather it and beat it up. But just to give you a general idea of size, what we're talking about on this. Now I have the wheels in place but we haven't painted them yet. I just put it basically on there to give you show you how big it's going to look like with a guy who would just walk over onto the other piece. I think we're going to call it, uh, call it uh, done for this particular video. There are a bunch of things that I've put on order like that 
that thing that's going to go out front here, the cart that'll hold the uh, the Panther turret, we'll put that on there. That's coming out from Ming. And there's a few other things that I want to get as well. And I'll start working on this, and the next video might be out in a couple of weeks. It's just all depending on when we can get more stuff done and the rest of the products that I want to do on it. But in really enjoying the kit, it's going together really well, and we'll do some little pin line washes on it and things like that in the next video. But this just gives you a really good idea what the thing's going to look like. Oh, and before I forget too, I am going to try to work out putting a gantry up here. Something that would be able to grab the, uh, the turret, pull it over, drop it into place. Not sure if I'm going to be able to pull that off with this. Uh, I've been looking at some online, and Verlinden used to make one of those. I don't know how big it was. I'm going to have to look into that a little further. If not, I've got a bunch of I-beams that will be able to build up something ourselves. If nothing else, it'll just be the sides will going up on it. But that's the beauty of modeling. We uh, kind of wing it here, and as we go along, we'll figure out what's the best thing for this diorama. So, uh, like I said, we're done for today on this. I want to thank you guys, as always, for watching. And please stay tuned, because we have many more videos coming.